radio this morning, break down in tears. What's it like for you with Taj now being at Port Adelaide Fire? Yeah, I did hear that interview as well. And um, even driving in here, I said, oh, mate, don't get embarrassed if I get a lump in my throat talking about the situation. But uh, you just, <clears throat> I suppose, you watch your young, your young son grow up into a young man and um, to be able to now um, hopefully live out his childhood dream, um, you couldn't be any prouder um, as a parent. Um, knowing the industry and knowing how cutthroat it is um, probably makes me understand and appreciate um, the opportunity he does have now. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just super proud as a parent, but um, and so is my wife and, and any sister and my daughter. So as a family, yeah, look, it's, it's taken a little bit longer than probably what we wanted, um, but uh, he's just really excited and we're super proud as a family. How does it work for you? I guess being an assistant coach at the club that he's going to, I mean, do you you get asked by the recruiting boys for your opinion on him or, uh, yeah, anything like that? Well, they know I'm going to be pretty biased, but, um, <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah, in a way, it's been a two-year um, opportunity for myself as in coaching, um, but also the long-term sort of projection when we moved over was that they could have a closer eye on Taj being a father-son. Um, and, look, they, yeah, the recruiters and list management and staff that go out and watch any player um, that Port Adelaide look to go after do their due diligence like any other so there's no bias from me um you know they haven't had to ask me my opinion um they probably want to get a bit more insight as to him as a human being and what he's like off the field uh but at the same time you know they've got a job to do and they make their own assessment and i've got to be removed from that do you feel like you've maybe given him his first leg up being who you are but it's he's had to really work hard and he's Got to take the most, make the most of that opportunity. Yeah, well, any, you know, I think he's the fourth father son here at the club. Any player that's played at this footy club and has a son come through and hopefully in the future daughter come through and play footy at this wonderful club has a great opportunity. They do get a bit of a leg up, but at the same time, it's an opportunity to, to be under the watchful eye of the club. Doesn't mean there's any guarantees. And I think um, credit to Taj, he's, you know, he's, um, he's handled the expectation when we first moved over. Um, and sometimes there's added pressure that comes with being um, a son or a father that's played, especially one that's played in a premiership. So he's had to endure, I suppose, the pressures um, of that. Um, and then I suppose the, the, um, then the situation going into this year's draft um, with no guarantees, but knowing probably in the back of the mind it would unfold the way we would like it to, and it has. Um, so I think he's handled it really well. Um, and yeah, look, he, he's um, got all the hard work in front of him now. Um, he's, he's, in an, he's in a great position where he gets an opportunity um, to uh, really hopefully live out his childhood dream. With all the bumps in the road, with you know, Taj is saying that he hopes to follow in your footsteps, what is it like to see him wearing the emblem, wearing the, the shirt now that he's a quarter away from? Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, it's exciting, you know, because I know as a, from a coaching point, I know how exciting we are about the, where we are heading as a, as a football club and a, and a team on the ground. And to be able to sort of come into an organisation at this time, yeah, you're super proud. And for him to be wearing the colours um, in an official role now um, is a proud moment. And it's, uh, you know, when you look back on uh, when we were living back in Perth and he would be the mascot running around in the port gear, running on the, on the oval and Travis Boat looking after him as I'm running on the ground and to where they are now, they're going to be kicking footies with each other. Uh, yeah, oh, I, I can't not get excited about that. Uh, but he knows that uh, he's just one of many players now and I'll, I'll treat him like, like he is a player and he knows he'll get no favouritism from me. And uh, just really excited for him to be wearing the colours. Um, as you mentioned, the young fellas, you know, you, you can't go past, you know, the, the guys that we've brought in, Butsy, you know, Rose, you know, Xavier Dersma, Kane Farrell, these guys, for young fellas, um, which is, it makes us exciting about the club, is that the extra work that they do um, to work on their craft, I've, you know, I've said to him, I said, mate, one, you can build strong relationships with guys similar age. In terms of your senior players, you know, you can go through them, you know, in terms of, um, I suppose your character and your off-field and on-field and how you go about your professionalism, I think you can't look any further than Travis Boat. Um, but then you look at the craft of Robbie, Robbie, um, Robbie Gray in the forward line. You know, you've got Tom Rock. In the, so there's a abundance of players. So I think he's, he will find his niche and, um, and build those relationships um, you know, as, as he gets into it. Do you see him coming under... Under you in the midfield group, or do you think it'll be more with Bass in the forward line? No, nah, I think I think it'd be easy on the young man. I think he'll probably go on the forward line. Um, yeah, learn his craft there. You know, as we've seen, you know, we've um, gradually sort of, I suppose, brought guys like Connor and, and Zach Butters into the midfield, and um, I dare say Taj will go down that same path. But 
that's Kenny's decision. But if I'm looking at it in the short term, I think uh, he'll probably be more under Bass and Chad Corns in the forward line. How soon do you think he'll, he'll get a crack at the league level? Oh, it's the unknown, um, and I think the wonderful thing at this footy club and what Ken's and us supporting Ken as coaches is that uh, it doesn't matter about your age, um, you know, um, and experience. If you're right to go and you perform, you train well, and, and we think you're ready to go, you'll be picked. Um, as we've seen that this year and we've seen over the last couple of years. So, look, he, he's got some work to do. Um, he needs to build. Obviously, he, he's fit enough, I believe. Um, he's he needs to obviously build that strength and power, like all AFL bodies get after a couple of pre-seasons. But in terms of understanding the game and getting used to the speed, I don't think um, we'd be that much of a dramatic sort of, I suppose, adjustment. So uh, all he's got to do is have a nice, good, solid pre-season, which I think he's looking forward to getting into tomorrow. And, um, and we'll see where that takes him. But uh, he'll set his goals, I dare say, and, and uh, look to try and achieve them. And if he plays, that'll be great. But uh, he knows he's now on a journey, um, which uh, very, that he's very grateful for. Do 2K. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to, yeah, I wasn't going to sort of like put him off by saying he's got three 1Ks, but um, <laughs> no, look, I think for, the, for himself and Lockie and, um, you know, that would just be more about sort of getting a feel of the training and, um, you know, for you know, me being a coach, um, you can sort of see some of the guys train the off season and obviously being his father, I've, I know he's been doing the work three or four times a week. So it's just a matter of about getting in that team environment. And, you know, like I said, he's uh, wearing the Port Adelaide colours. He's super excited. As a player, top of player, um, oh, what he brings, I, thought, I said, I think um, uh, he, he shows empathy as a, as a young man. Um, he's had to deal with a lot over the last couple of years on a personal level. Um, he has a lot of respect for the people within this footy club, and I think that goes a long way. Um, and he knows that he's got to work hard to earn his stripes, and I think he's got that work ethic. Um, but in terms of the way that he plays, um, you know, he, he's, a, he's a creative player that can use the ball well by foot, uh, makes good decisions. Um, and, you know, if he gets the ball on the outside, he generally uses it and makes things happen. So I think he's, it's exciting for our club and what he can add to the group that we had. And, um, but yeah, only time will tell. Just on uh, another player, Ollie Lord coming to the club, what do you know about him? What does he sort of bring? To be honest, I don't know a hell of a lot, um, but it's great that we've got a key position player um, that we can develop. Um, so we're looking forward to meeting him, but to be honest, I didn't have a hell of a lot to uh, do with that dis decision. Um, but it's it's uh, it's a fantastic effort for the club to be able to get another tall in, um, and obviously long getting a Lear Lear in, in the off season in the trade period. So it's exciting for our tools. Um, you know, we're obviously losing Westhoff, you know, to retirement. So yeah, it's exciting and looking forward to meeting him. Lockie, do you think he'll end up as a Oh, look, there's every possibility. I, I remember seeing him playing at 18s a couple of years ago and he goes into the midfield and just used his frame and his speed and power. And, um, but I think initially, like, you know, like all young fellas come in, come into his primary role and that's been across half back. We know he's explosive. We know we've got some players down there that have had some injuries over the last couple of years. Um, but yeah, he's uh, no different to any other. He'll get into the pre-season, find his niche. Um, but I would think he would slot in the half-back. But answer to your question is, yeah, definitely in the future you could see him probably moving into the midfield. Um, when that is, it could be two or three years, who knows. You, are you getting ready to well, I guess, welcome anyone, any new people into your midfield group for 2021? Or? Yeah, we'll, we'll look to um, increase minutes um, into like Connor Rosie, Zach Butters. Um, those type, Kane Farrell, who got a taste of it this year. So we'll look to add, and you've got to raise your Fantasia, who's now coming to the side that could come in on, on a wing. Um, so yeah, we've got some depth there. Uh, but I think the two main ones are Zach Butters and Connor Rosie that we really want to step up their, um, their percentage of game time throughout the midfield. Um, we saw even throughout the year when they did go in there at critical moments within the season, they were able to um, really give us a spark and give us a lift. So um, I'll make sure that uh, when I'm down with the main group here, that they're in the midfield group. Yeah, we've got to be confident, and I think we've um, we've traded well, we've drafted in well. Um, so I think yeah, and we and we haven't. Like I said we've lost some experience in terms of Brad Evert and and uh, Justin Westhoff, but um, yeah, and that experience there. But I think we've added to the group as well. Um, so yeah, definitely we're confident that we can go that one step further and uh, get ourselves hopefully to that last day in September, if it's going to be September next year. Um, and yeah, hopefully go all the way. But um, a lot of hard work ahead of us now. Um, but we've got a real drive amongst us within the playing group and coaching group because um, we were so close, um, which is exciting.